Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Brogdon and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage. Today, with the help of my partner, Gary the Graphics Guy, we're gonna talk about test ads, why they're important and a couple ways to enable them. All right, let's start with the why. Test ads are kind of like the seatbelts in a drag racer. Not the sexiest part of the machine, but they will save you from a ton of trouble. When you use test ads properly, you help ensure three things. Number one, advertisers are charged correctly. Number two, everybody's stats and reporting get logged correctly, including yours. And three, you avoid one of the most common causes of account suspensions. Let's take a look at these real quick. Number one's pretty easy. If you test with live ads, the server thinks your impressions and click-throughs are real, which means they get logged and somebody ends up paying for them. That may not sound like much, but when tens of thousands of developers do it at once all over the world, that's a lot of imaginary traffic to ask somebody to pay for. Number two, accurate stats and reporting. If you're testing with live ads, all those impressions and click-throughs are recorded as real, which means your reporting is off, as are the numbers for the ads and advertisers themselves. Last, and probably highest on the list of your concerns, is that test ads help you avoid account suspensions. If you're working on your app, loading and clicking live ads, the server's gonna say, hey, this person just clicked on like 10 ads in a row. That looks like click fraud. And then down comes the ban hammer. All right, so that's the why. Now let's talk how. The good news about implementing test ads is that there's two fairly simple ways to do it, one of which is dead easy. Fair enough. Uh, the quickest way to make sure you get test ads is just to use one of our predefined test ad units when loading ads. We have a list of them in our Android and iOS testing guides. Each format's covered, and you can take the ad units right out of there and pop them into your apps. Plus, this video that you're watching right now is embedded in the test ads guide. So if you're watching me in an embedded player right now instead of on youtube.com, chances are you're on the right page already. Just pause me and scroll down. If you use those test ad unit IDs, you'll see a creative like this. It'll proudly declare itself as a test ad so you'll know right away that you're doing it right. All right, so that's the first way of implementing test ads. The other is to use test devices when making your ad request object. These APIs for Android, iOS, and Unity allow you to register a particular device to receive test ads, even when using your own ad units. You pass them a hash device ID, and the SDK will make sure that when that device runs the code and makes a request, it always gets a test ad. It's a good question. They're shown in the Android or iOS device logs when an ad is requested. Just look for a line that references test devices, copy the ID, and you're good to go. Another good question. You can use one of the test ad unit IDs I mentioned above, or just download and run one of our samples. You'll see the device hash in the log either way. One of the advantages of using test devices with your own ad units is that you're not stuck with the default test creatives. Instead, you get dummy versions of production ads that are clearly tagged as test ads. So you get to see a wide variety of creatives while still using test ads. Plus, when you use your own ad units, your mediation configurations are still in play which means you'll sometimes see the ad mob test ad, but you'll also get mediated ads. That can help you test mediated ad units, but be careful. You can see there's no test ad label here. Not every network is capable of deciding at runtime to show a test ad instead of a real one. Some have server-side flags, their own way of registering test devices, things like that. So make sure you check the documentation provided by the networks you're mediating and configure them accordingly. All right. That's about it for this episode, but I do have some resources for you down in the description for this video. First up are links to our testing guides for Android, iOS, and Unity. You'll find those test ad units I mentioned along with some other good tips. There's also a link to our SDK support forum where you can post technical questions and get answers from our support team. And of course, if you have a question about this video or an idea for a topic you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I'll see you next time.